How many times have you learned something quickly only to completely forget it later? Perhaps it was the Pythagoras theorem back in high school. Now, if someone came up to you right now and asked you to tell them what the Pythagoras theorem was, you'd be like, of course I remember it. That's easy. Isn't that, isn't that a spell from Harry Potter or something? You see, the problem is you never learned the thing. You just shoved it into your short-term memory. All those nights you spent cramming were a colossal waste of time. If you want to learn something and understand it deeply so that you never forget it, so that you can tell your grandkids all about it, you need to start incorporating the Feynman technique. You see, Richard Feynman was a theoretical physicist best known for his work in the fields of quantum mechanics, quantum electrodynamics, superfluidity, and other groovy shit. He received his Nobel Prize back in 1965 and was well known for his ability to explain complex phenomena, physics concepts, in layman's terms so that even babies can understand them, right? And in today's video, I'm going to give you his blueprint. I'm going to give you his mental model called the Feynman Technique. And the best thing about this is it's really simple. It's just in four steps. And it, you can use this to learn anything from quantum physics to computer programming to helping your sister with her math homework. Okay, here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to go through the four steps, right? And right at the end, I'll go through some examples. So let's just jump into it. Step one, simple step. Write the name of the concept that you want to get better at. Write at the top of a blank piece of paper. Write the top, write the name of something. Thing. Step two, write down your explanation of the concept. But here's the thing, you need to pretend that you're explaining it to a baby. You need to pretend you're explaining it to possibly the dumbest person you've ever met in your life that just doesn't know anything about the subject, right? So you need to simplify things down. Explain to that person. Step three, take note of what you know and what you don't know, right? So pay attention to where you have gaps in your knowledge. So maybe areas where you didn't explain it as eloquently as you could have, maybe areas where you kind of worded your way out of explaining things. Go to your source material, whether that's the textbook, your lecturer, the internet resource you're using or whatever it is, and go to that section and understand it fully and completely before you move on. Once you understand it fully and completely, go back to step two, make it clean, make it crispy like bacon, right? And then move on to step four. So step four, simplify your explanation even more. Go down, strip it down to the raw essence while still maintaining the integrity. It still needs to make sense. It still needs to be able to convey the message of what the concept's all about. Use diagrams, analogies, metaphors, stories, whatever you need. Use whatever you want. As long as you're able to remember it and to explain it simply, that's step four. Okay, step four is incredibly important. You see, our brains are pattern recognition machines. We work off complicated neural networks that are intertwined. Give your brain plenty of reference material to draw information from. Try use strange or interesting diagrams, analogies, or metal cues. The more unique, the better. Our brains remember things that are unique. If I asked you to recall your trip to the grocery last week, you probably wouldn't remember a thing. But if the fire brigade came into the grocery last week and ran down to the deli section. You probably have that memory for a long time, perhaps even a lifetime. Use the power of the mind to create powerful analogies that spark those neurons. All right, so let's say we're trying to understand the relationship between current voltage and resistance in a wire. So we're gonna outline that in our step one. Our step two, we're gonna spill out all the things that we know, but try and make it simple, try and make it easy for anyone to understand. Step three, we're gonna look at our step two and see where we have gaps in our knowledge. In this example, we didn't really know what exactly the units were for each of the components. So we're gonna look at our textbook, we're gonna ask our lecturer, we're gonna do all our stuff and get the relevant information. Step four, we're gonna use analogies, diagrams, and things that just spark our memory, right? Make us understand the concepts easier. This diagram here that I have is rather relevant for this particular problem and explains things very nicely for us to conceptualize. All right, guys, so that's the Feynman technique. Remember Einstein's quote, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. So you need to make sure that you can explain everything simply before you move on. Once you can do this, you have the knowledge, you actually have the wisdom there's a big difference between remembering things and actually knowing about it, between knowledge and wisdom. So I'll be seeing you guys next time. If you like the video, make sure you subscribe. Until next time, peace. So this is the end of the video. You must have really liked it if you got this far. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, I'm right. Okay. If you liked it, please click subscribe and hit the post.
post notifications because YouTube is doing this weird thing right now where if you subscribe, it doesn't even show you my videos. Very strange, very strange stuff. But yeah, click those post notifications. Well, good. Till next time.